a pleasure and privilege to introduce Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Thank you so much, sir. You get two kisses. Oh, the French. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here in Norfolk. And let me start by saying I was glad to support Nancy's campaign for the House of Delegates. Um, she is going to be a strong leader on the big issues facing this community and the whole state, including climate change. And I'm happy to also say that I supported 14 other Virginia Democrats who also won election, thanks to the good work of so many volunteers and supporters who knocked on doors and made phone calls and got voters to the polls. And in January, Democrats will take charge of the state government for the first time in 25 years. It's about time. In, 19, or in 2018, I also supported two congressional candidates here in Virginia who won, Jennifer Wexton and Elaine Loria, who represents this part of the area and the surrounding place. Their strong campaigns helped the Democrats capture the U.S. House of Representatives and uh, began holding President Trump accountable for his dangerous abuse of power. And I think that's one of the good news, pieces of good news that we've had recently. Now, you may ask, why am I kicking my campaign off right here in Norfolk? And it is because southeastern Virginia proves that, with the right candidate, we can turn areas from red to blue. And we need to do that all across this country. And today, I'm glad to announce that I am running for president to defeat Donald Trump and to unite and rebuild America. We cannot afford four more years of President Trump's reckless and unethical actions. If he is an existential threat to our country, to our values, and our national security. And every day it seems to bring another example of just how unfit he is to serve as our president and commander-in-chief. And this week was no exception. Yesterday, many of you have read, the president forced out the Secretary of the Navy, a Marine veteran, for upholding the military's commitment to the rule of law. Secretary Spencer wrote, and I quote, I cannot in good conscience obey an order that I believe violates the sacred oath I took to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, unquote. That's an extraordinary rebuke. And here, in this city, which is home to the world's largest naval base, I salute Secretary Spencer for not flinching from his duties. But the fact remains, we have a president, a commander-in-chief, who has no respect for the rule of law and no concern whatsoever for ethics or honor, or for the values that truly make America great. If President Trump wins another term in office, we may never recover from the damage that he can do. The stakes could not be higher. We must win this election, and we must begin rebuilding America by investing here at home and restoring our nation's credibility and moral leadership abroad. I believe my unique set of experiences in business, government, and philanthropy will enable me to both win and to lead. As a candidate, I'll rally a broad and diverse coalition to win. And as president, I'll have the skills to fix what is broken in our great nation. And there is a lot broken. We have an economy that is tilted against most Americans. We have a health care system that costs too much and doesn't cover everyone. We have communities ravaged by gun violence, including here in this region. Sadly, mass shootings, like the one earlier this year just 17 miles from here in Virginia Beach, have become almost routine. We cannot accept that. We have to put an end to this madness. I'll be making gun violence a major issue of my campaign, just as I've made it a major issue of my life in government and philanthropy. I've spent hundreds of millions of dollars fighting the NRA to win common sense gun laws, and I'm not stopping now. Across the country, we have schools that aren't preparing our children for success in the increasingly high-tech world. We have an immigration system that is cruel and dysfunctional. We have a climate change that is growing worse by the day. And we have special interests that corrupt Washington and block progress on all of these issues. 
As a child and a Boy Scout, I was taught to believe in the promise and potential of America, and I've never been more worried about its future than I am today. America is at its best when we work together to find meaningful and lasting solutions to our big challenges. We need a president who understands that truth and who can do it rather than just make promises. And I offer myself as a problem solver and a doer, not a talker. And as someone who is ready to take on the tough fights and win, we say we have to beat Trump. Now, I took on Trump on gun violence and won stronger gun laws in states across the country. I took on Trump, the climate denier, and have led efforts that have closed more than half of the nation's dirty coal-fired power plants. Trump right now is carrying water for big tobacco. I've taken on the dangers of e-cigarettes to protect our kids. I know what it takes to beat Trump because I already have, and I will do it again. Defeating Trump and rebuilding America is the most urgent and important fight of our lives, and I'm going all in. My resolve is to stand up to the bigotry and hatred and wrong-headed policies that is anchored, he is anchored in, and in my belief in government as, good for, as a force for good. I've spent my career bringing people together to tackle big problems and fix them. It has worked well in business and in running the country's largest, most progressive city, and it can work in Washington as well. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Growing up, my father never earned more than $6,000 a year. I managed to work my way through college and get an entry-level job in New York. And then, when I was 39 years old, I got laid off. I didn't know what to do next, but I did have an idea to start a company. So I took a chance. And today, I'm glad to say our company employs 20,000 people and generates large profits, all of which go to helping people across the country and around the world. My company's employees get well paid. We provide the best health care benefits money can buy. And if someone in our family has a baby, the primary caregiver gets six months paid maternity leave. I'll run my company according to my values, honestly, with integrity, fairness, and inclusion. And that's the same thing that I brought to city government. I first ran for mayor because when I looked around, I became more and more frustrated with stories of senseless gun violence, failing schools, and lack of opportunity for those born poor or who were discriminated against because of their race, religion, or gender. Most people said to me, well, that's just the way it is. And I said to myself, why? Why can't we do better? Or rather than just complain about it, why don't we do something about it? And so that's exactly what I did. I was lucky enough to be elected mayor of New America's most diverse city just weeks after the attacks of 9-11. It really was a frightening time for our city and our country. But we rebuilt the economy with new jobs and opportunity for people in all rungs of the economic ladder. We worked with our teachers to negotiate the largest raise in America, and we improved graduation rates working together by 42 percent. We cut murders in half while reducing inca incarceration by nearly 40 percent. We also cut the city's carbon footprint by 14 percent and created new programs to combat poverty. And we expanded health care and strengthened immigrant communities. As mayor, my priority was helping the millions of New Yorkers who needed it the most. Now, I know government can improve people's lives, because when I ran New York City, that's exactly what we did. And we should never settle for anything less. This is America. Since leaving City Hall, I founded the largest gun safety group in history, and I created a campaign to take on the biggest polluters and the climate threats. As mayor, I banned smoking in restaurants and bars, and then cut teen smoking by 50%. And today, we continue to win battles against the tobacco industry and their sleazy attempts to hook young kids on e-cigarettes. Now, I know how to take on the powerful special interests that corrupt Washington. I know how to win because I've done it time and again. We need a president who is ready to lead us where we need to go in a ways that we can be proud of, someone with the experience to hit the ground ready to go. I am that person, and that's why I'm running. 
I will be the only candidate in this race who isn't going to take a penny from anyone and will work for a dollar a year, just as I did for 12 years in New York City Hall. Over the course of this campaign, I will tell you what I will do as president and how I will do it. I'll outline plans for creating good paying jobs, providing quality health care for every American, stopping gun violence, reducing incarceration, fighting climate change, fixing our broken immigration system, raising taxes on wealthy individuals like me, protecting women's and LGBTQ rights, supporting our veterans, and reestablishing America's place in the world as a force for peace and stability. But more than plans, I offer the leadership to turn plans into reality, to roll up my sleeves, to motivate our country, to unite and rebuild America, and make it fairer and better. I'm ready to get to work, so let's get it on. Be happy to take a question or two. Sir, you have your hand up. I thought you were going to jump out of your seat. I was lucky enough to receive some very flattering calls that uh, they'll just stay between whoever made the call, and if they want to talk about it, it's up to them. I certainly would not violate their confidence, but uh, I didn't grow up in a world where I knew famous people, and when you get a call from one of them, I still pinch myself a little bit. Uh, yes, sorry, one quick, one quick follow-up, sir. A lot of your Democratic opponents, they're saying you're jumping into this race, you're going to be spending a lot of money that they're accusing you, sir of trying to buy your way into this race. Elizabeth Warren had some tough words for you today, sir. What would be your response to them? Are you trying to buy the presidency? Look, for years I've been using my resources for the things that matter to me. I was lucky enough to build a successful company. Uh, it has been very successful, and I've used all of it to give back to help America. Uh, I'm committed to fight for gun safety. I'm committed to fight for uh, stopping climate change, which could is a disaster for us. Uh, I'm committed to doing things like I was lucky enough to be able to help flip the House from, Democrat, from Republican to Democratic control so that the House d provided some oversight of the President, which the Republican House before that had not done that. Um, I was um, using my money to do things like turning Virginia from red to blue. Both houses are now blue, and it was, a lot of it was because of the monies that we provided uh, on gun safety that uh, were one of the big issues that were, people cared about. So I'm now in the race. I'm fully committed to defeating Donald Trump. I think he's an existential threat to our country. Um, I'm going to make my case and let the voters who are plenty smart make their choice. Yes, Miss, this young lady, I was her son next. job done. Is that accurate? Well, let me phrase it this way. I think that there is a greater risk of having Donald Trump reelected than there was before. And in the end, I looked in the mirror and said, that just cannot let this happen. If you remember back at the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia in 2016, I said that Donald Trump was not suited to be uh, President of the United States. Uh, unfortunately, I guess not, not, a lot of people, uh, not enough people listened to me. But um, we have to do something about Donald Trump. I think I know how to beat him. I've beaten him a number of times before. I think I know what this country needs, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Yes, Miss? Thanks for taking my question, Mike. Um, on impeachment, do you believe that the hearings will backfire on the Democrats and potentially turn the voters away from the Democrats? N nobody knows, but I think if I've come to the conclusion that while impeachment is a very serious thing and fundamentally we should let the voters uh, in uh, November, every time four years when it comes up, make a decision, I think the conduct that we have uh, uh, heard uh, described in these hearings is such that uh, if I were a congressman, I would vote for impeachment. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. But how do you plan to win over some of the minorities that you need to win a Democratic nomination? Well, I think that I've done an awful lot of things that uh, would should attract people. Uh, I've worked very hard to make sure that uh, we tackle discrimination wherever I saw it. Um, New York City has a record that, uh, not perfect, but that I think is we should be uh, 
uh, proud of in terms of making it a city open to everyone. I've been a very big supporter of gay rights and of going against uh, any kind of discrimination that I've seen any place. Uh, worked very hard in minority communities, brought the crime rate down and saved an awful lot of uh, lives of people who unfortunately, you, we have high crime, we would have lost a lot of young people. And uh, it's not, I've never done everything perfectly, but I did the best job I could. Yes. Page. Have you talked to the DNC about how that might work? No, it's up to the DNC to, they can uh, set the rules, and uh, if they set the rules where I qualify, I would certainly debate. If they set the rules where I don't qualify, uh, then I won't. But um, what I want to do is talk directly to the public and explain what I've done and what I would do and give them some comfort that because of what I did in the past, I will deliver in the future the next just empty promises. And if you can say that in a debate, okay, although it's hard to do that, I think I'd be much better off talking to the public just like I'm doing now. Thank you all, and I just wanted to thank the people from Virginia. So, so going to uh, Phoenix, Arizona tomorrow. I have no idea, but we're going to do that test, and it's called voting. Thank you.